So conservative news personality Steven Crowder finally addressed the controversial video that had been making the rounds online, which relates to a June 2021 argument with his wife that, well, doesn't exactly put Crowder in a good or positive light considering the audience he aims to appeal toward. And in an unsurprising move, the statement released by Steven Crowder on the matter is kind of boilerplate-ish, and it doesn't seem to be enough or it clearly isn't resonating with, you know, longtime fans and critics who were not exactly thrilled or even as far as being uh, upset or disturbed by the conduct of Crowder seen in the released footage. My name's Greg Coit, and we're going to go ahead and dive into the details of this conservative personality debacle here on The Breakdown. On April 27th, Yashira Lee, he's a former contributor for outlets like Huffington Post, NBC News, so on and so forth, he took to his substack with a very particular, very curious, exclusive story. And really, it was a bit of a hybrid. It was one part exclusive story, one part exclusive video footage, which the video footage in question depicts an argument between Steven Crowder and his then wife Hillary, which it looks as though this uh, argument is occurring on like maybe a back patio or front porch, something like that. Now, while it's unclear as to the entire context of this argument, as in we don't know how it started, but we do see that there appears to be some bickering back and forth between Crowder and Hillary over taking over the single vehicle, I guess, shared between the two for Hillary to go run some nondescript errands. And Steven Crowder was saying, hey, why don't you take an Uber? You know, they're bickering back and forth. And it's a it's a very petty argument with Steven Crowder, you know, obviously getting agitated. And, you know, his then wife also appearing to get agitated. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary of abuse and cruelty. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I do have steaks. Wood pellets, my grill. I know it's an unreasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, how do you man? How do you man? You see the love of that. No, no. How do you man? No, you're not taking the car. You're not taking the car. You are not. Then I will ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not about Stephen. Give it an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. You're feeling some constraints? Stephen. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go, I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. See? <laughs> I, I, Do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you going to be back on back? The only way out of it is discipline or stuff. It's the only way out of it, Stephen, or we're at an impact. We are at an impact. Good. Because you can't have any discipline or respect. Yeah. There you go. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you give up so easily. I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline or respect. You said, then we're at an impact. Stephen, no, we are at an impact. Okay? I love you, but Stephen, Stephen, your beast is sick. Your beast watch it. is sick. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm gonna let go, I'll get what you need me to get. And I, I need some space. We need to just talk and baby for a little bit. Okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you, and the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it, you go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right, right in the past. Become someone, let's see, day in and day out, worthy of a wife 
We're, no matter the life. I didn't say the life. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get texting what you need. I'll get you what you need. Mm-hmm. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do those Are you committed enough to do those things? Back. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you and committed to that. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Are you I'm, committed enough to do those I'm, things? I'm, Are you committed enough to do those I'm, things? I'm, Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm gonna just walk the dog's front and gloves. gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dog's take Don't you take, take that in. Now, as seen in the video, you hear Crowder making some comments about, you know, accusing Hillary of maybe not living up to or maintaining what he describes as wifely duties. And you hear Hillary just saying, what do you want me to do? I love you, so on and so forth. I mean, obviously, there is a lot of stuff built up upon this argument. Now, if you're solely going by the Yashir Ali article, there's some backdrop to this uh, uh, regarding administering medicine to the family dog, which uh, Hillary allegedly was uncomfortable with because at the time she was eight months pregnant and she was worried that whatever this medicine was, because it's not clear what the medicine was, she was worried that it might adversely affect her pregnancy. Again, that is going off the context provided by the Yashir Ali article and not by any public statements rendered by either Steven Crowder or, you know, Hillary Crowder. Now, one moment in the video that has managed to raise some eyebrows in terms of something that, you know, it, it is 100% without a doubt something that happened is you can see Steven Crowder at one point uh, telling Hillary to watch it and then following it up with a little bit more of a stern reiteration of fucking watch it. Now, I don't think I need to explain, you know, what that typically pertains to. Typically, when you tell somebody to watch it, you're telling them to, you know, basically shut up, you know, keep your mouth shut. You're crossing a line. You know, that's, that's typically what watch it means. When you, sit, when you tell somebody watch it in a very stern manner, like, you know, what Steven Crowder did, you know, you're, you're telling them, you're alerting the other party in the conversation or argument, you're alerting them that they are crossing a line or, uh, or are about to cross a line. And if you hear, like, the comments that Hillary was making prior to, you know, Steven Crowder saying watch it, you know, uh, Hillary was saying something to the effect of, you know, Steven Crowder being sick, you know, allusions to like, you know, maybe some mental health issues, whatever the case. Again, we don't, we as in myself, you know, you folks in the audience, we don't know the entire domestic history between Steven Crowder and his then wife, Hillary. We just don't know. But another contentious part of the Yashir Ali story and also uh, the video is not necessarily something you see occur in the video it is something alleged to have happened after the fact, which is Crowder allegedly telling Hillary after the little patio spat that he would fuck her up. At least that is what Yashir Ali alleges happened after the patio debacle. He says, according to audio, that he has in his possession, but he didn't release to anybody else. He didn't release the audio out there, but he claims to have in his possession audio of Stephen Crowder confirming uh, that he did say to Hillary, I will fuck you up after the course of this argument that occurred on the patio. Now, however, it is important to note, at least in the Yashir Ali article that he put on his Substack, he claims that neither party, as in, you know, Steven Crowder or Hillary, neither of them are claiming that any physical abuse happened. But again, Yashir Ali says that in this audio, that he has, he has some kind of audio where Steven Crowder is either admitting or acknowledging to having said, I will fuck you up to his spouse. But it is also important to note that Yashir Ali did not release this audio transcript or, or this audio file that he allegedly has. Now, I'm not outright claiming that Yashir Ali is lying about the I will fuck you up statement in this audio you know, file that he purportedly has. I'm not saying that he's lying just because he didn't share it. What I'm saying is, it's kind of odd. It's kind of odd that Yashir Ali would share this video, which, you know, is, is pretty intimate stuff. And when I say intimate, I'm talking about something that occurs within the confines of a marriage that, that is, you know, typically not 
available for, for public view. You, you typically don't see this, you know, when, when you examine some, the history of somebody's relationship. You usually don't see every argument or heated arguments that transpire between the parties. I just find that this video file that Yashir Ali clearly had no issue releasing, I find it odd that he's willing to release that video file of the patio argument between Steven Crowder and his then spouse, but he's not releasing the audio file, which you know would uh, ostensibly verify possibly the most damaging aspect of this entire report on Crowder, the part where he you know purportedly threatens what most would construe to be a threat of physical violence. I'm just saying, if, if you have the audio, yeah, maybe maybe you should release it. I don't know. You know, maybe that would put to rest some concerns that people have that maybe that part is being exaggerated. Now, the one thing that is curious in all this is why why Yashir Ali, of, of all the people who could have arguably gotten their hands on this footage, he, he appears to be the first guy that got his hands on everything. And according to a statement featured in Ali's report about this whole video and debacle and their divorce, you know, whatever, according to a statement that purportedly came from Hillary's family, they wanted to address this because they purport that Steven Crowder misrepresented the circumstances of his and Hillary's divorce during a brief segment on his show mere days before this report dropped on April 27th. Now, for those who are familiar with the segment I'm referring to, it was it was an odd segment. It was, you know lasted about five minutes. Uh, again, Crowder dropped it earlier in April, and you know during it, you know he claimed that he picked the wrong person uh, and that his wife decided to leave him. But according to the claims made in the Yashir Ali article, Hillary's family is asserting that Crowder was the one to really initiate the proceedings insofar as being the one to initiate leaving his wife physically, hiring a divorce attorney, although Hillary's family did admit that Hillary was the person to initiate the divorce filing in December of 2021. Honestly, that aspect of it all, it, it feels like a lot of, you know, he said, she said nonsense about like, oh, well, he started the divorce first. No, she started first. That stuff is kind of immaterial. Now, what I will say is I'm not going to rush to judgment and, you know, say that Steven Crowder must have been an abusive husband for the entirety of their decade-long relationship. I, I, I can't really make that judgment call based upon a three-minute, some-odd-second video clip where somebody's having a heated argument, which, according to the Yashir Ali article, was an argument that transpired while the marriage was basically already in the throes of falling apart. Even in healthy relationships, there are arguments. In fact, there, there may be heated arguments in healthy relationships, uh, healthy marriages. They happen sometimes, disagreements happen. But when you are talking about a relationship or a marriage that is on the brink of divorce, or you know, divorce is already in the cards and in play, yeah, things, things do get ugly, things do get nasty, and you will have people on both ends of the relationship saying horrible, horrible things to each other, you know, once tempers flare up. I'm not necessarily saying it's good when that happens, but, you know, love and the dissolving of marriages and relationships does weird things to people. People get mad, people get angry, people do irrational things when it comes to relationships, whether the relationships are in good standing or in bad standing, you know, Love and marriage and, and marriages, you know, falling apart, relationships falling apart. Yeah, it, it gets people to do and say dumb things, especially when they're angry. But honestly, my issue with the original video that Steven Crowder dropped earlier in April that, that basically kind of kicked this whole shitstorm into gear is some of the comments he made about him taking issue with no-fault divorce in the state of Texas. There's no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. 
No-fault divorces, they're self-explanatory in terms of what they accomplish. Any person can leave their marriage, they can end the marriage for no reason. It doesn't require that somebody demonstrate or you know have evidence of things like abuse or infidelity or anything like that. If you want out of the marriage, you can just leave the marriage. Now, don't get me wrong. I think marriage is, is a very important decision in someone's life. And I don't think people should be getting married or divorced willy-nilly. You know, when you get married to somebody, yeah, you should absolutely work on the marriage. But taking a severe issue with no-fault divorce, as, as Steven Crowder just, you know, openly stated during that, you know, segment earlier in April, yeah, that, that's a little weird because if you're that against no-fault divorce, like, what would you want it to be replaced with, ideally? Like, forced marriage? Like, do you want to hold your spouse in captivity if they want to get out of the marriage? Like, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. But anyway, Steven Crowder dropped a video response on April 28th to address the, the video that has a lot of people talking. And, you know, you have people who are, you know, trying to cancel their Mug Club memberships and stuff like that over this video. People are not happy with Steven Crowder based upon the content from the patio spat. And so Steven Crowder's video response to the whole thing is him saying that he's going to release more details about their divorce. I commented on my ongoing divorce on Tuesday, requesting privacy in the best interest of the family, but also by court order agreed upon by all parties. Look, broken marriages are ugly, and in them people do ugly things. Myself, of course included, I would never claim otherwise. However, due to recent misleadingly edited leaks to the tabloid press without context and not subject to consequences of the court, well, if not privacy, the next best option is truth. So today, I have filed a motion to officially unseal all files as they relate to the matter of legal record finances, relevant medical records, including mental health history or evaluations, depositions, and any motions or sanctions from the courts of Texas. I will not be leaking private marital information to the press, but if the privacy agreements are not respected by all parties, I will address all that is a matter of irrefutable legal record in full context next week. Now, I will say, like, Stephen's in kind of a rock and a hard place right now. There's not much he could really do or say that will, you know, really kind of, you know, gin up a, a lot of support from people who are currently critical of him over this video. If you take a look at all the reasonable avenues he could have taken uh, to address this matter, you, you would see it's like a no-win situation for Stephen Crowder. Because if he did, like, one of those public apology things... Well, yeah, you know, people would say that's a disingenuous apology. And if he attempted to just kind of wait for this to roll over and not even address it, then people would be calling him out for not addressing the matter head on. And with Steven Crowder, you know, attempting to defend himself, which it seems like that's what he's trying to do with this video statement, with him trying to defend himself, well, then people would accuse him, as they are, that he's trying to defend the indefensible. See what I mean? Like, there was, there was absolutely no way he could address this without it blowing up in his face. There, there was really no way to mitigate uh, the blowback from this. Now, do I think Steven Crowder is ultimately going to be able to bounce back from this? Well, I, I think it's going to have to take a few things into consideration. Number one, uh, there, there is some contingency on whatever information he intends to release about, you know, these court motions or whatever. Because, again, as seen in the statement... He's talking about he's going to drop a bevy of documents. What these documents are going to show, I don't know. So who knows? Maybe there could be some kind of bombshell thing in there that is just going to blow everybody's socks off. But aside from that, yes, I do think Steven Crowder is going to be able to maintain some level of influence, some level of notability. But I think Steven Crowder's brand and his whole shtick, uh, it's obviously currently, but I think it will continue to suffer a huge blow over the patio spat that even has former friends of Crowder labeling him, you know, a, a domestic abuser, for lack of a better term. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Go ahead and drop your thoughts on this matter in the comments section below. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts, whether you think, like, hey, this is definitely an instance where, you know, Steven Crowder is abusive, and he was probably abusive the entirety of the marriage, or whether you think this is a case where it's not getting the nuance that it deserves because obviously we are trying to examine, uh, you know, a decade-long relationship through the lens of a three-minute video. That, that is a difficult thing to do, even if the behavior is kind of crummy. 
Again, whatever your thoughts are on the matter, drop them in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, that was the breakdown. Peace.